So my name is Andrew Coley, I'm a television commentator and presenter, I specialise in motorsport, I currently cover the FIA World Rallycross Championship, so I travel around the world with that championship, so I'm, I'm a very lucky boy. Uh, I studied at what was then Hastings College uh, between the years 1995 and 1996, which makes me feel quite old. And I studied graphic design, I'm a qualified graphic designer. I went to Bexhill College first of all and unfortunately I didn't do very well at Bexhill College. My parents were teachers and I think I was of a mind that I should do something academic so I chose A-levels which related to my GCSEs and I just didn't get on with them, I, I didn't enjoy them, I felt like I was still at school, I was still in the classroom, it was a similar length of day. Uh, it wasn't that it was a bad college, it just didn't suit me and uh, I failed, failed all my levels. My parents weren't very impressed as you can imagine being school teachers. So I went to Hastings College and I actually signed up for an engineering course first of all and literally within three days of starting the engineering course I realised I just didn't like that either. Um, so I transferred from the engineering course to the art course which was really lucky because the art course was super popular and, uh, and basically I kind of managed to sneak onto it and the, the progression for me on the art course was really, it was, it was fascinating, you know, I'd never done art. I remember the first, um, the first project was, oh can you make a hat that's around, you know, based around a shop? So I was like, yeah cool, so I did a hat that looked like a shop and it was just terrible, you know, was, there was no concept to it at all but I didn't get that in art it wasn't so literal, you know, it was so much more creative and probably that's what I learnt the most in, in my two years studying graphic design was how to be more creative. Here's an idea, think outside the box and, and be more creative. And that's been fantastic help in television, you know, when you're trying to come up with ideas, which sometimes you do as the presenter or the commentator, you know, the producer says, what about this? And you're like, well, actually that's cool, but what if we did it that way? And some of that creativity definitely comes from the background in the art. So when I studied at Hastings College, I was down at the old Archery Road site, which is along the seafront behind the building that looks like a boat. That's where uh, that's the best way of describing where it is to people who don't know where it was, of course, because it, it's now gone. And there was a tower block there which had uh, the Heron Beauty and, and Brick Lang and, and, and the various different courses. Engineering was in there. And then we were in classrooms which were down at the bottom, which were a much more kind of a classical style building. Thinking back, I guess it probably was designed as a college, but it was, it was much more old school and less functional maybe than this new campus is. And the new campus is fantastic. You know, walking in the, the feeling of space and light but also the areas in which the students have got to chill out is really cool. You know, there's sofas and, and seating areas, everyone's sort of sitting in corners you know, just doing their work or, or just on their phones and yeah it's nice, it's got a really nice relaxed and a light and airy vibe to it and, and being right by the station as well, you know, we used to have to, well I used to, you know, it was like bus, train, bus or bus, train, walk, like it was a bit of a mission to get to college whereas this here for me on the train was, was dead quick. So I loved motorsport, I used to watch motorsport a lot uh, as a kid with my parents, my dad liked F1 and we liked rallying as well, we went and watched some rallies, uh, Rally GB or what was it then, Network Q Rally Great Britain or something, you know it's changed names several times, the RAC rally it was when I first went and saw it. So I used to go and watch a lot of motorsport uh, and then I decided that I wanted to, to compete. My parents bought me a day at a rally school for my 19th birthday which I really enjoyed and then uh, I went on to compete right up to national level. Unfortunately my parents were school teachers so uh, we weren't loaded and, and finance is a big part of motorsport so uh, when I ran out of money I, I then moved on to teaching motorsport and I spent 10 years working as a motorsport instructor before I started working uh, in television alongside that. So when I moved uh, across from motorsport into television, the, the kind of the two things went side by side. I was working at Brands Hatch as an instructor. Um, whenever television came to Brands Hatch, which is quite frequent because it's so near London, they would always ask me to do it. And I, I didn't really twig at first that it was a skill that I had. You know, we had a lot of good drivers, we had a lot of good uh, motorsport instructors, but I didn't realise that talking was something that I was maybe better at than some of the others. So um, I, we did a thing for GMTV with the doctor on GMTV. I did two hours work and then they took me out for lunch. I was this TV malarkey looks like good fun. Uh, little did I know that you know a few years later I'll be doing 18 hour days and it's a real slog. Like we work incredibly hard on the job. It's not quite as easy as I thought it was when I first liked it. But I enjoyed what I did and, and the two different TV jobs that I'd done at Brands Hatch and I put those things together on a DVD and, and I actively went out and sought work. Um, originally I wanted to be a television presenter but what I found was that m television presenting mostly tends to go to you know, ex-models or people who are connected that kind of thing and that not being a model myself I figured there must be another way into this uh, and I you know I realized that I was an expert I, I'm an expert in in motorsport I was an expert in in rallying rally driving specifically and I thought okay can we make an opening into television using that expertise and, and that was how I got my first opportunity uh, at Eurosport television What's the best thing about my job at the moment? That's really hard because there are so many things which are which are great about it, along with some things which are not so great. So 
let's start with the not so great because everyone thinks television is so glamorous you know if I, you go into one of the places I work I nearly said the place there but I won't I've gone in there and I'm the only person in the building you know and you think that sports television there's glass screens and people tapping out scripts it's five in the morning and I'm covering a racing series that's happening in Asia and I go in and the you know the only person there's the cleaner with a hoover you know it's just not as glamorous as you think it might be uh, if it's studio based that so that was that was studio based in the UK I, I aside from the long haul flights in economy I love the fact that I get to visit these different amazing places we don't we, we really are very you ask anyone in TV it's airport motorway racetrack hotel that's it you know who in, in my line of work but we get a taste you know in the evening we try to find time to go out locally and, and have a beer and, and maybe you had to be in a local restaurant meet some local people you always meet the local fans I love all that the other thing I suppose is you know I, I wanted to be a rally driver and I've ended up being a motorsport commentator I'm, I'm pretty lucky in that some of the guys who I now commentate on and whose phone numbers I have and who occasionally I WhatsApp and you know take the mic out of some of them are my heroes you know and I'm now working alongside my, my heroes and I, I get to I'm in this position where there's so many people working to make a TV show and I'm the guy at the front who has to commentate the action. If I do it badly, the whole thing looks bad and I feel bad for everyone who's, who's making the show. And as the front man, the front person on it, that's a huge amount of pressure, but that pressure is so rewarding. When you nail it, I love it. It's a, it's a real adrenaline rush. And, and also you have to remember that like, I don't like everything about my job. You know, I do 18 hour days sometimes. It, it's really hard. And work isn't necessarily always fun. Uh, and likewise, probably college. You know, you're not always coming in and having a blast. You're learning stuff, which is setting you up for work. And it's a long day, but that does set you up for work. So it doesn't matter if some of your experiences at college aren't completely positive. You know, like I'm, I'm afraid life's a bit like that. You know, when, I, when I've just arrived in China and I have to go straight to the track and work for 15 hours, I'm not having the best day ever. But that, yeah, that's, that's part of the course. There's some good stuff and there's some bad stuff. You know, as long as it evens out at more good than bad, I think you're onto a winner.